Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the storage review conference room slash partial lab because we've got stuff taken apart all over the place in here. And today we're taking a look at a gaming dock. Now this isn't the first one that we've seen, but it's the first one from WD and their yes. black line, which includes uh, M.2 SSD, PCIe add-in card SSD, uh, something else I'm forgetting. The SNE50. Yeah, right. So there were, yeah, that's right. There were a couple SSDs, the new uh, management application. So all sorts of things. Uh, the portable too, the, uh, the plug-in uh, SSD. They've got hard drives designed for game repositories, all sorts of stuff in the black line. And this is one of the last things that we've seen from the uh, update in the uh, end of the year last year. And we've really enjoyed everything in the black line. Yes, except... Until yes. now? Yes. Okay, so until now. So the, the deal with this guy, this is the D50 Game Dock NVMe SSD. And what WD is trying to do is combine all the ports that you want when you connect this to a PC. Uh, Although more of a notebook. It's, it's well, a desktop side, you're not going to use this as much, I think. Uh, for well, because you've got more ports on the system, right? Yeah, but on a notebook, uh, especially if you're work from home or work from multiple locations now, uh, you might not want to carry around your power adapter or all those other things, so you have one point of uh, connection to your notebook. Maybe to a game console as well, possibly. Uh, well, not yet. N well, most don't have Thunderbolt. The 3. Thunderbolt Three is a problem on the connectivity. Okay, but what it does, to Kevin's point, is it gives you a bunch of ports on the back of this thing. It gives you an SSD inside. Although they do sell it bare, it does come in uh, one and two terabyte capacities as well. Although getting in this thing is not as easy as it may look. Yeah, the uh, it kind of looked like each side would pop off, but uh, it mostly opens like a taco, and I could not open it further uh, without cracking the taco shell. So opting not to destroy this thing, but we do know that there's an SSD inside. It's uh, cooled with airflow around it. It doesn't have a big heat sink on it. or Yeah, it's a heat sink that uh, stands alone on the drive. There's no thermal bridging. Right. So, so no connection from the case to the... SSD. Yeah, we've seen some designs that sandwich the case together, so the uh, case acts as a nice thermal bridge and as a passive heatsink to everything. This one it relies on what looks like active cooling, but we've never actually gotten the fan to turn on. Right, and we're going to talk about that because the heat dissipation is a big, uh, I almost said problem, but it's a concern, at least our concern. We'll, we'll uh, look at it in a little bit when we plug it in and, and see what the heat of this system is, or this uh, device is. But we've gotten this thing to top 180 degrees Fahrenheit into the mid 80s uh, centigrade all the time. And that's a bit of a concern when it comes to this. Now, because it's a gaming device, it must have RGB. And this little fella's got about a three inch yeah, it, light strip. So the frustrating part for this, especially since I'm a couple inches taller than you, yes, it's very hard to see it's even on when it's sitting at a desk. When you stand it up, I actually took a couple photos of this for the review, and I turned the lights off because even in here, with moderate light, you just can't see it all that well. So it's neat that it's there, uh, but it's, it's going to have to be pretty dark for you to notice. Well, dark or maybe up on like a shelf or something, but then it... Well, then you got a cable fountain coming out the sides of the thing. Yeah, it, the design elements, there are some concerning parts. Okay. So, it's neat conceptually. The problem is heat, as we've mentioned. We'll get into the performance a little bit, which is tied to heat in, uh, in some cases. And uh, the unit overall is is quite expensive. So where this started, it's actually even come down like 50 bucks from its launch a couple weeks ago. Uh, but where it came out is is really high, and you could buy better individual components in terms of the dock and a portable SSD and combine those, and even you know some sort of light strips or whatever you know what's your your beak a little bit on the RGB front yeah. with the money left over. So actually, let's take a quick look at the um, system here and get to some of the highlights. So as Kevin highlighted, Thunderbolt 3 for connectivity, primarily for laptops, but you could connect it to other systems as well. The capacity point we hit, the speed, that's going to be the sore spot in terms of your concern. Yeah, uh, we've been told that the drive can handle temperatures up to 85 degrees Celsius before it starts thermal limiting. And with a small workload hitting it with like burst 
uh, activity, we were able to drop that down to like 200 megs a second read and around 60 to 70 megs a second write. Right. So 3,000, 2,500 in the best case, best case scenarios on speed. And we did get close on certain workloads when we really started pounding it. Uh, but with black magic, as you're saying, once we started getting to those higher thermal loads, we got abysmal performance, and that's just not acceptable in a device like this. No, especially for a gamer, which you're trying to squeeze as much performance as possible out of your uh, device, and this is going to, well, it's going to be slower than a hard drive in certain areas. I would say that's the reverse squeeze. Then uh, RGB lighting, which is managed through a, uh, a Windows app, which we'll dive into in a little bit. Yeah. Um, key specs again the capacity points the length and width it's a little bit a uh, little rectangle you know kind of uh, um, you know just a normal nice normal design i mean it matches the design idea of the other wd black thing so it looks good yeah. from a from a look standpoint five-year warranty which is great the um let's see we've got uh, oh right we've got all the ports laid out uh, the one thing missing that we haven't seen on any of the uh, docks that would be kind of nice, but we understand it's a little bit limited, is a USB Gen 2 by 2 Right. Uh, which right now, I think it's a, they add it into a system if it's not on board. It's like a $70 add-on card. But having that chipset on a dock, especially when the brand sells the device that uses that uh, connection interface, would be it helpful. just shows you how fragmented... Uh, portable storage is interface wise. I mean, we're working with currently products that are Thunderbolt 3, 3.2, 3.2 by two. I mean, it's it's a lot. Yeah. So, but that is a fair, a fair point. Um, then we take a look at a little upper close shot of the ports just so you can get a better view on that. I like how they uh, recommend the P50 portable SSD for the, uh, for the USB port. Yes. But, uh, Power-wise, though, you, you sort of set it almost as a throwaway that it could charge your notebook. Yeah, it does up to When we were talking before, that's a big deal. Up to 87 watts, although um, it's more specific for the uh, more consumer-oriented devices because uh, in our case, we had a lot of workstations sitting around, and uh, while it will charge it, you'll get a uh, warning saying it's going to be a slow charger. Right. But it will still charge it. Yeah, and as they show here, keyboard, mouse, whatever else you want to connect to it, and then run the single Thunderbolt 3 cable to your laptop and, and get all of that uh, connectivity. Yeah. So performance-wise, this was a Blackmagic test anyway. Was This was Blackmagic on one of our notebooks. We uh, were able to see higher performance uh, through Blackmagic on our uh, desktop. So there's, there's performance differences depending on what you're attacking it with. Although, uh, when we run uh, Iometer on it, uh, we were able to see higher workload uh, p uh, metrics with a uh, uh, multi-threaded. Uh, yeah, so talk about that, that 16 thread where you're really pounding it. That's where you're able to get to their performance numbers, although this isn't how they got there, I don't think, in there. They yeah, use so a crystal disk mark with a little tiny slice of the drive. Yeah, we're looking at a, um, uh, I think it's around a five gig uh, segment, and it, the focus is really showing single threaded metrics for your copying files on and off the drive. Multi threaded performance is you're hammering a scratch space for like Photoshop or um, other creative use cases. And that's where you could see higher performance metrics for uh, those workloads, but it really depends on what you're uh, throwing at the device. Well, most people aren't going to hit it that hard, but then I guess you could make the argument that performance doesn't really matter that much because it's fast SSD inside. Like, I guess, how much do we complain about top line performance on a device like this? Well, if it can maintain the top line performance, that's a big element. But if it can't, it becomes kind of mute. Right. And so that is part of the problem that Kevin was highlighting before is that when we get this thing to peak temperature, the performance goes down to, I guess, a little bit better than a hard drive? Uh, we've seen hard drives that are faster on write speeds. Slower than a hard drive. Uh, so it's a problem. But um, that that's just kind of fundamental to this particular design that, that just isn't awesome. Yes. And we don't like to say things aren't awesome. We'd prefer everything would be great, but it's just not. One thing, though, that, that WD has done a good job with is this new dashboard tool that they've run. Uh, they're whole WD Black family through, and we'll take a deeper dive on that. But just in terms of manageability, 
They've done a good job with the software, at least on the Windows side. Yeah, it, the software side is pretty nice, uh, but it is kind of strange that like items like the fan just seem to uh, be overlooked. Yeah, it is a bit bizarre. Um, but let's get into this app a little bit. All right, so you've pulled up the WD tool. We've got this uh, WD Black D50 connected to our Lenovo workstation. You're running some black magic to give it a workload. Yeah, and you can see from the performance tab, there's some uh, look at those data going beautiful in and out. lines. The concerning part, though, is look at these. Look at that temperature. Right? I think we're sitting at like 81 degrees Celsius at the moment, which that's a buck eighty in Fahrenheit's. Yeah, as we were mentioning in the uh, kind of showing the unit off, there is a fan inside the unit, but it's never come on during our tests. And the dashboard doesn't make reference of the fan, so you don't really get to see RPM or anything. And I'm not sure if it only turns on when the case is at its uh, melting point or what. Well, it, to be fair, we ran that by WD and they said it's good to 85C. Yes, and right now we're just running kind of a burst workload back and forth with it. And uh, let's see, we're sitting at 82 degrees. The thing went from yellow to pink. We're at 83 degrees right now. Um, so we're close. So, I mean, that's one of the big concerns that we have with this particular enclosure is that it looks neat, but it runs hot. Yeah, a lot of the other... The other devices that we've seen in the market, um, the units end up being heavier, but there's thermal bridging between the storage device on the inside and then like the heavy metal case. Okay. This is a little bit different where um, the device is more plasticky and there's not really a thermal bridge. It depends on airflow, but it doesn't seem like it turns on. And Or, or, or when it is on, it's not a lot. Okay, so, but this does have the same things that the other WD Black tools have that we've seen, including um, the wear uh, level of the drive, this beautiful little temperature versus uh, read write performance. Yeah, and then you can drill in, enable, uh, make sure your trim is enabled. You can hit it manually, uh, handle your uh, write cache settings. Under tools, uh, firmware update, uh, a lot of that uh, cool stuff gives you access into. Uh, more of uh, like day 50 management versus day zero management. You're really beating around the bush here, aren't you, to get to that RGB thing. Yes, Go look at day zero management. <laughs> you have to enable rainbow or uh, yeah. fl I think flash was kind of cool where it uh, jeweled across the front. But I mean, you can really dial into specifically how you have your uh, case DRAM uh Right, set for you know all your RGBs. Plus, it's got like the um, add-in card that we've looked at. It's got the connection with third-party systems, I suppose, to synchronize your your light bright. <laughs> yeah, there's so if you need it, it's on there. And what I love about it, I mean, I can turn it off very easily. Yeah, but you're not exactly the target audience for this mm. thing. What the heck is Edge Rover, by the way? What? Where is Edge Rover? The Edge Rover app on the right side in their commercial uh, block I there. I don't know, but uh, I believe uh, it's going to open up. It's All right. Yeah. So we're done with that. But So the tool's nice. The management's nice. The RGB management is nice if you're into that. The connection yes. with other third-party apps to manage RGB is nice if you're into that. Yeah. Uh, but we're left with the fundamental problem of it's really expensive and not very fast. Correct. And in our written review on storagereview.com, we talked about how you could get the SSD that's inside, which is an SN750, right? Or 730, yeah. depending on which variant. And the best dock in the world and a little enclosure for the drive. And yes, you'll have two pieces and you probably won't have lights, but you'd have enough budget left over to get an RGB light uh, mouse pad or... RGB light, uh, mood cube, or whatever or else you OLED want. OLED thing that goes on a, a CPU heatsink. Whatever, yeah, yes. the OLED thing where you can have a little dancing guy on there. Whatever you want, your to your dream to your heart's content. Uh, but that's the one thing that really makes us hesitate from recommending this, even though it does come in bare one and two terabyte capacities. The pricing's just out of whack, and even since launch, it's dropped uh, about ten percent. Uh, so it. It's coming more in line, but it's got to get there much faster to close that gap before we can recommend it. For now, it's a neat little dock with storage and a little bit of a, a mini uh, RGB strip as a party trick. Good management tool, but uh, nothing to get all too excited about at this price point. 
Anything else to add? No. It's it's fun, but I wish it had a little bit more. Fun, but wish it had more. And that's about where it left us. Not in the feely, good feely spot. So that's it for now. Thanks for checking out the review.